Alrighty, hello all you crazy people out there, this is Dragonite Spam, and welcome back to another one of these Game Maker videos. So, it's been a little while since I've done just like a straight up Game Maker tutorial sort of thing. I was actually going to do another procedural generation one, but then this just walked into my brain at like 2 a.m. This, uh, this morning, so I decided to see where I could go with it. Paths! So, say um, you have like a tower defense game or something like that. That's probably the best example that I can think of. Uh, if you're not familiar with tower defense games, they used to be more popular than they are now. Just go on any Flash website and you'll find a ton of them, they're quite fun. But anyway, so you have a tower defense game and you have a path that you want enemies to walk along. And uh, it can be closed, it can be not closed. The point is you want them to have a, a specific track that they follow. And you don't really want to have to say at this point in time walk towards this coordinate, at this point in time walk towards this coordinate, then walk towards this coordinate because that's going to get messy real fast. So um, the developers, I'm going to try and move some of these bars off my desk so I can actually... Uh, move my mouse around without knocking into things. The developer is a game maker. I uh, thought that we might be interested in having something called paths. And I'm just going to uh, in this path test for now. So what these are going to do is they're going to allow you to do exactly that. So uh, they also had the foresight to realize that most of the time we're probably going to want to be uh, using this in context with a room or something like that. And you can come up to the top here and you can say select a room background. This editor itself looks sort of like the room editor. Uh, it's got a couple differences though, obviously I'll be talking about them later. First, I'm going to be drawing out a path, and quite simply, if you're familiar with, uh, say, vector graphics or something, this might look somewhat familiar to you. You're just drawing out points on the screen. Uh, they can be closed or they can be not closed, as in um, the last point can connect to the first point or it can not connect to the first point, depending on what you want. I'm going to say closed for now. Uh, it can be all straight lines, or it can be uh, curved lines. Again, if you're familiar with vector graphics, this might be familiar. If you're familiar with... never mind. I'm going to go back to straight lines for now. If you have uh, smooth lines, you can also set the precision with 8 being the highest you can go. Um, and say uh, something like 1 or 2 being not very curved at all. But I'm going to be working with straight lines, so I'm not going to concern myself with that. Next, let's see, do I want to go back into this room editor? No, not really. I'm going to make myself an object. And the object, for lack of better words, let's just call it enemy, keeping with the theme of tower defense. And I'm going to say uh, its sprite is going to equal this blue thing. So we're going to get out of there. We're going to go and uh, add this object to the room. It doesn't matter where in the room we actually add it because you'll see in a minute. And in the create event, I'm going to be saying path start. And this is going to take a couple arguments, path test. Um, speed, let's make this, how about a speed of 10. End action. There's a couple things you can do when object gets to the end of the pass. For now, I'm going to say stop. And absolute, true. Let's see, if you want to, I'll get into this later, I won't get into it now. First, I'm going to actually run the game and show what happens. So, you can see here, the blue object is running around the path at a speed of 10 pixels per second. Per frame, rather. 10 pixels per second would be really, really slow. And when it gets back to the beginning, it's going to stop itself. Now, uh, first, I guess, uh, absolute. If I set this to false, that's not how you spell false. If I set that to false, instead of jumping to uh, the beginning of the path here, when it starts, it's going to just start over here. And it's going to go and um, go down sort of this way, if you can follow my mouse cursor. I think I have the mouse cursor enabled on uh, OBS right now. But it's just going to treat its current position as the starting position. I'll just run the game. If you uh, don't get what I mean by that, you'll see in a moment. And it's going to go, uh, kind of run along this way, offset a little bit by where it was before. I don't really think that's especially useful, because then uh, if you just start the path wherever the object happens to be, what if there's something in the way, it'll kind of act a little funny because you'll be walking through trees and stuff. So I'm just going to make this, I just said false. I just made it the same as it was, yeah. Uh, we're going to want that to be true. A path action stop. I could talk about the other ones. I could show the other ones, but you can probably figure out what they do just by the names. Continue and restart are very similar. Uh, they're going to make the object uh, keep going along the path. Restart is going to make it jump back to the beginning. Um, if it's not closed, I'm going to go and, um, let's see, let's make this not closed. And I continue. If it's not closed, it's just going to make it keep going from where it is. And if it'll get to the end a little bit faster than that. Alright, excuse the cut in the video, I just kind of like let it keep going and um, I didn't actually talk about it for about 15 seconds. But you can see it started 
it started the path over again from where it was, um, using this as the, uh, the new starting point instead of this. Uh, meanwhile, if you say path action restart, and it's not closed, it's going to jump back to the beginning. So let's wait for this to get to the end again. And you can see it just warped back to the beginning instead of just starting from where it was. Um, so I'm just going to say path. I'm just going to st say uh, stop again. Obviously, if you say reverse, it's going to uh, kind of bounce and start going backwards. I'm also going to make this closed once again. Let's see, Scottish Geeks apparently uploaded a video. Next, I guess I'll say, uh, I did explain what this does earlier, and you can kind of pretty much see what it does. Um, if it's a smooth curve, it's going to follow a rounded path instead of a, uh, a straight-edged one. And I don't really think I need to demonstrate this, but I will anyway, because... I don't know, I kind of clicked the button already. And it's just, uh, it's looping around instead of running into corners. Uh, let's see, let's get out of there. There's a couple things, a couple variables related to the path that you might be interested in using. Um, let's see, I'm going to go into the draw event, and I'm going to do a few things. Alright, first I'm going to be drawing myself a rectangular background so that you can actually see the text against, like, the, uh, the dark green grass. And then I'm going to be saying draw text, um, about 32, 32, and string value of... I can spell, that took me, like, eight tries to spell right. Anyway, I'm going to be also labeling this. I don't know if I spelled that right, nor do I care, but we're going to run the game now. And it's going to, uh, it's going to be not drawing itself because I didn't tell it to. Alright, there we go, now it's going to draw itself. People, uh, I don't exactly know why, but apparently a lot of people are still in Game Maker 8.0 or previous, and draw self actually doesn't exist in Game Maker 8.0 or previous. So I get comments sometimes with people trying to convince me that, uh, draw self doesn't exist and one, you really should be upgraded to either 8.1 or uh, Studio at this point. 8.0 came out, what, like five years ago now? And uh, if you are still using that version for whatever reason, I don't know, you have a license on it and you don't want to uh, upgrade, just tell it to, like, uh, I don't know, draw self with, uh, like, it's Sparta index and image index and x and y position and stuff. But never mind, you might have noticed while I was just uh, off talking about random things, um, that path position was more or less showing the ratio of how much of the path you've completed. I don't want to say percentage because that's not between 0 and 100, it's between 0 and 1. Uh, so example, 0.5 would be uh, about halfway through the path, 0.25 would be a quarter, and so on. Uh, of course, 0 being the start and 1 being the end. And there's a couple more variables related to paths you can use. Path, um, let's see if I were to go down here, you can see them. Most of them should be pretty obvious what they do. End action is obviously the end action that you gave the path when um, when you told it to start. Index is obviously the index of the path that is following. Orientation, you can rotate the path. And the orientation is going to be the uh, angle that it's rotated by. Position, position previous. Talked about that already. Position previous is just what it was in the previous frame of the game. Uh, not unlike the x previous and y previous variables. Scale, you can scale the path uh, with uh, path rescale over here, and speed is obviously the speed that you're following the path with, and uh, these are just the end actions that you can tell it to do when it gets to the end. I'm probably not going to go and demonstrate all of these. Add point, append, assign, change point. I'm not too crazy about um, changing objects on the fly while you're making games, uh, while your game is running rather, unless they're like a spark or something that you're loading from a file. But you can add and remove uh, positions in the path through code. I guess if you're making like a level editor and you want to let the users create their own path, that kind of thing could be useful. That would be my primary example. Path exists. Um, there's a function like this for pretty much every resource to check if it exists. Honestly, that's another reason you shouldn't uh, ever have to go and create your own resources. Then you have to go into dealing with uh, if they exist or not, and that's a big headache. Anyway, you can, uh, you can get some information about the path. You can get if it's closed. Get kind that's going to be uh, straight or curved. Name, number, it's going to tell you how many uh, nodes it has in it. Point speed, point x, point y, precision. Set close, set kind, set position, all that fun stuff. Um, something I suppose I should mention is that each node of the path can have their own relative speeds. 100 is going to be the default speed, and higher than that is going to be faster. So say, how about point, how about point 0.2 from here to here? This red one, let's make that a speed of 200. And about 0.4 from here to here, let's make that a speed of like 80. So it's going to fly between 2 and 3, and it's going to crawl between 4 and 5. And apparently I have an error in code somewhere. Oh, yeah. Leaving a complete statement since to do that. 
Anyway, and don't ask me how I screwed that up, but I entered 20 instead of a uh, instead of 200, and it took me about five minutes to figure out why it was behaving funny, it behaving differently from what I expected. Anyway, um, not 80. Let's make that um about 50. So from uh, here to here, from node two to three, it's going to fly, and from here, uh, from node four to five, it's going to crawl. So I'm going to run the game. And that is exactly what should happen, assuming I didn't like mistype another number. So you can see it sped up when it got close to here, and it slowed down when it got close to there. And uh, it went back to normal. I guess a better way of explaining path speed over here would be each node, uh, this is the percentage speed, so um, the default speed for each node is going to be 100%, so it's going to be moving at the speed that you specify. Um, over here, the speed is going to be 200%, so it's going to be moving at this point. 16 pixels per second instead of 8 or 20 instead of 10 or whatever it was. I don't remember <clears throat> By the way, if my voice sounds funny, I don't know why my voice sounds funny It's like I have allergies or something except I haven't had allergies for like three weeks now Anyway 50% so it's going to be moving I think 5 instead of 10 uh, Whatever I told it to and it's going to uh, it's going to scale evenly so it's not going to suddenly speed up and slow down um, Let's see a few things up here um, you can Go and define like rotation and scale in the path editor or whatever, and you don't have to go and um, do that through code. I think that looks pretty useless, so I'm going to undo it. You can uh, you can mirror it horizontally, you can mirror vertically, uh, flip it vertically rather, scale it, do all that fun stuff. These buttons here are just for moving around in the uh, in the view. I don't know why there isn't a mini map like there is in the room editor. There really should be. Uh, maybe in a future version they'll add that, so you can just sort of like move around with the mouse. It is honestly kind of a pain to move around with the uh, with these buttons over here, especially if I have a really big map. And uh, of course, you can change the grid, to make this uh, whatever you happen to want it to be. Uh, you can turn off the grid if you want it. Anyway, is there anything else? Um, the last major thing, actually, there's a couple things. I changed my mind. I don't want to do that. So let's see. I'm going to say if you hold down, um, how about the enter key? You can say path position equals 0.5. So now that whenever the enter key is going to be pressed, it's going to be uh, snapping halfway through the path. So um, doing this and it's jumping to the halfway point. Let go, continues, hold it down again, and it goes back. Uh, somehow or another, as far as I know, and I'd love to be proved wrong in the comments because it sounds like it could be pretty useful. There is no way to uh, jump to a specific node in the path. So say when you hit the enter key or when some other condition is true, you won't instantly like jump, I don't know, over here or something like that. Or to another node, you have to um, figure out where it is. Uh, like this node over here, I think this is what? This node 5 is a little less than halfway through, so like 0.48 something. You could do it through math by like adding up the uh, coordinates of the points and scaling them and stuff like that, but I'm not gonna do that here. That would take a while to uh, figure out and get right. And the last thing I wanted to do with regards to paths, um, there is in the other events uh, list an end of path event. So you could do whatever you want here when the uh, thing ends. So you could say, how about uh, instance destroy would be the obvious one. I spelled destroy wrong, didn't I? Uh, there we go. Instance destroy would be the obvious one. So when it gets to the end, it's going to delete itself. And I'm just going to hit enter to make it speed up a little bit. And when it gets to the end, it's going to go away. If you're making like a tower defense game or something like that, you'd probably want to say, um, I don't know, when you get to the end of the path, remove one life or something like that and then delete yourself. Or, I don't know, remove like 50 gold points or whatever. Anyway, uh, that's paths. Um, let's see, is there anything else I want to do here? No, not really. It isn't much, but like I usually do, I will be putting this file up for download in the description of this video. If you're still watching by this point, you're probably able to replicate this like program that I made here perfectly. And uh, honestly, probably even better. But the file is going to be there all the same. Uh, so for now, eh... Export project, yeah, that looks about right. I hope you all enjoyed that. Uh, Recount and subscribe, watch more of the stuff I have uploaded, and I will see you all later.